The Threxian Armada emerged from hyperspace on the outskirts of the Sol system, a vast sea of metallic warships blotting out the stars. Their numbers were legion, their weapons cutting edge. The ships slowly advanced in attack formation, moving inexorably towards Earth. On the bridge of the TFS Valiant, the flagship of the undermanned human defense fleet, Admiral Joka watched stone-faced as the Threxian ships entered visual range. She had been warned about the invaders, a cruel, warm-ongering species who showed no mercy. Yet she felt no fear looking into the abyss, only grim resolve. Magnify, she ordered. The main view screen zoomed in on the lead Threxian vessel, a hulking behemoth bristling with enough firepower to slag continents. A stray thought flashed through Joka's mind. How many worlds had fallen before that terrible juggernaut? But she pushed it aside. Time enough for that later, if there was a later. Admiral, we're being hailed, reported her comms officer. Let it through. The screen wavered, switching to a transmission from the Threxian commander. He was a towering specimen, even for his kind, encased in dark armor etched with runes of conquest. The gray, angular face and emotionless black eyes chilled Joka to her core. People of Earth, rumbled the Threxian in accented English. You have fought valiantly, but your defeat is inevitable. Surrender now, kneel before your new masters, and mercy may yet be shown. The transmission cut off abruptly, replaced by the looming mass of the Armada. Around Jalka, the bridge crew shifted nervously at the ultimatum. Earth was clearly outmatched, its defenses shattered in the initial attacks. But the Admiral felt no temptation to surrender or kneel. She would see her home planet fall first. Bring the fleet to battle stations and deploy fighters for perimeter defense, Joka ordered. We make our stand here. Down on Earth, a heavy pall hung over the cities and countryside as the news spread. But there was no panic or despair. Instead, a grim determination took hold in the hearts of billions. Mothers clutched their children close, speaking in whispers of courage and their love. No matter what happened, they would face it together. Leaders around the world issued statements rejecting surrender and urging calm resolve, and the people responded, voices united in a chorus of defiant hope, better to die free than live as slaves. Admiral Joka gazed at the blue-green gem of Earth on the tactical display, wondering if this was the last time she would look upon it whole and unconquered. A terrible beauty, yet more radiant than ever before, in the shadow of darkness. She straightened her uniform and turned to face her bridge crew, faces young but set with quiet fortitude. Their courage shone as a beacon, banishing doubt from her mind. For two centuries we have held the line and kept our world safe, Joka spoke, her voice ringing with conviction. Now we face the test of annihilation. I will not lie, the odds seem insurmountable. She paused, locking eyes with each officer in turn. But we are not alone. An entire planet stands with us today. Billions of voices united, refusing to kneel or cower. Come what may, we will show the galaxy what humanity is made of. Joka allowed herself a grim smile. Now bring us about. Attack pattern Delta. Let us make these Threxians pay for every inch of Earth in blood. The fleet surged forward with reckless courage to meet the oncoming tide. Fear was swallowed up in duty, honor, and love of homeland. This was Earth's finest hour. The city streets rang with the thunderous footfalls of Threxian walkers advancing in lockstep. Squadrons of assault craft screamed overhead, bellowing flames and smoke leaving trails of ruin in their wake. The invasion had begun. On the ground, the Threxians expected panicked humans fleeing in terror or surrendering in despair. Instead, they were met with defiance bordering on madness. In Washington, D.C., civilians blocked the avenues, preventing Threxian troops from reaching the Capitol building. 
Unarmed and vulnerable, they stared down the giant insectoid aliens without flinching. Each knew they faced almost certain death, but none were willing to step aside and let their homeland fall without opposition. In Berlin, empowered youths hurled bricks and gasoline bombs at Threxian walkers. They knew they had little chance of stopping the lumbering war machines, but their hatred of fascist oppression burned brighter than any fear of defeat. Where the Threxians built barricades, human protesters tore them down. Where they deployed troops, the people surrounded them with waves of non-violent resistance. This planet would not bow. The Threxian ground commander observed the chaos erupting around his regiments with growing dismay. These humans were woefully overmatched, yet refused to submit to reason. It went against all military sense. Why do they resist when defeat is inevitable? He asked his second in command. They cannot hope to prevail, yet refuse to surrender and spare themselves further suffering. The other officer adjusted his face shield, staring at a phalanx of schoolchildren blocking a road and delaying an entire mechanized column. I do not pretend to understand it, sir. They seem emboldened by each futile gesture of defiance. The commander's mandibles clicked in frustration. Clearly these humans would not be cowed by shows of force alone. More active measures would be required. Open fire on the protesters, he ordered. Let them taste Threxian steel and see how brave they remain. The artillery barrage on the capital protesters sent flesh and stone flying in equal measure. The Threxian commander watched impassively as the smoke cleared, revealing mangled bodies littering the ground. Now perhaps they would grasp the futility of... A sudden tumult interrupted his thoughts. Incredibly, more protesters were gathering, replenishing the shattered ranks. Makeshift stretchers bore the wounded to aid stations while new bodies took their place. Still, the people refused to disperse. Before the stymied commander could issue another order, the crowds began to sing, a stirring melody of courage and sacrifice. Their voices soared over the cries of the dying and roar of engines. The music flowed like lightning into a rising tsunami of defiance. The Threxians hesitated, sensing the precariousness of their position, this enemy that would not be cowed. For each protester cut down, two more emerged, singing songs of freedom. High above the besieged planet, the remnants of Earth's defense fleet hurtled toward the invaders in a bold suicide gambit. On the ground, people stared up at the glittering moat streaking across the firmament. A father lifted his daughter onto his shoulders, be brave, my heart, he told her. No matter what happens, we are free. She smiled through sudden tears. I'm not afraid anymore. He pointed to the lights in the sky. Look there. See how brightly they shine. Those are our protectors, our guardians. They will keep us safe. Aboard the Corvette Avenger, the last human vessel still combat capable, the crew sang along with the transmission of protesters below. In moments, they would fulfill their final duty. But all were at peace. The aging Avenger plunged into the Threxian flagship's lateral sensor array, spearing through deck after deck in a makeshift missile. On the ground, a cheer went up from city to city as the invader vessel erupted in a satisfying conflagration. The Threxians had come expecting submission. Instead, they found a people united by courage that laughed in the face of death and learned that war is not won by weapons alone, but by indomitable spirit. The mood aboard the Threxian command ship was uneasy. Their overwhelming fleet had been stalled in orbit for days, unable to establish a stable beachhead. Pockets of human resistance persisted no matter how many soldiers were deployed or protesters gunned down. Admiral Jaikaz stared grimly at the projections. At this rate, the campaign to subjugate Earth could take years, even with their massive technological advantages. Unacceptable. These humans fight like madmen, remarked his analytics officer. Targeted suppression is ineffective. 
destroying one group only seems to ignite the flames of resistance elsewhere. Jakaz turned to the comm station. Open a channel to the planetary leaders. I will address them directly. Moments later, his face filled screens around the globe as he was patched through to emergency broadcast systems. The Admiral decided on a new approach. Threats and shows of force had failed, but persuasion may yet succeed. Leaders of Earth, hear me. His digitally translated voice echoed from city to village. Why do you throw away lives so recklessly? Further resistance will only lead to more suffering for your people. On the ground, Weary civilian fighters gathered around screens and speakers, listening to the Threxian's words. His tone was almost sympathetic, but his advice rang hollow. Lay down your arms, Jekaz urged. Order your ships to stand down. End this profitless conflict which serves no purpose but to deplete your population. Your world will be spared and taken under our protection. In Washington, Berlin, Beijing, and Mumbai, leaders conferred hastily. The offer was clearly insincere, but could buy time for new defenses to be prepared. Ultimately, the counterspeech came not from any ruler, but a teenage girl in Paris. Pulling out her phone, she recorded a brief message and uploaded it to every social network. Within minutes, it was being broadcast worldwide. We will not lay down our arms. We will not stand down. We will not surrender, she said, voice clear and steady. You offer protection, but we see only subjugation. You ask why we fight against impossible odds. It is because we value liberty over life itself. Her words roused a chorus of agreement across Earth. Jekaz was stunned at this illogical refusal to mitigate destruction. You would rather die than submit. Why throw your lives away when there is no hope of victory? The girl looked straight into the camera, eyes blazing. Because to surrender to tyranny is not life, but slow death of the spirit. We fight not because we believe we can win, but because courage itself is victory. Her defiant words ignited new determination like a wildfire. On the brink of exhaustion, people found hidden reserves of strength renewed by hope. Jekaz switched off the transmission in rage. This strange human madness could not be calculated or contained. Early estimates of pacifying the population clearly underestimated their fanatical resolve. Their spirits would have to be broken by force. Deploy chemical weapons over population centers, he commanded. Let us see how they resist with their lungs bleeding and skin blistered. When they see there is no escape and no mercy, perhaps they will plead for the release of surrender. But as his ships moved into position to bombardment range, alarms sounded. Admiral, we have incoming. A ragged cheer went up aboard the orbital platforms and surface bases still controlled by Earth's defenders. Their ploy had worked. The Threxians diverted to bombardment trajectories, leaving themselves vulnerable. Waves of missiles and kamikaze fighters, some piloted by civilians, hurtled toward the Threxian fleet. Jakaz bellowed in rage as his armada dissolved into a chaotic melee. Their orderly assault became an all-out brawl. On Earth's surface, people clasped hands, praying and weeping together as the sky erupted in apocalyptic flames. But come what may, their spirit remained unbroken. The battered streets echoed with cries of the wounded and dying as medics rushed to render aid. The civilians had paid dearly for their continued defiance, but the price only strengthened their resolves further. In a half-collapsed Moscow apartment building, a grandmother cradled a shrapnel-pierced ten-year-old. It's all right, my child, she said softly, wiping blood from his eyes. The pain will pass. We are still free. The boy forced a weak smile. I didn't cry, Babushka. Was I brave? Yes, my love. So very brave. She hugged him close as his breathing slowed, then stopped. Bowing her head, the old woman wept silently, another innocent loss to the whims of tyrants. Outside, a squad of Threxian troops marched by. 
Their leader paused regarding the weeping grandmother. She returned his stare without wavering. Why do you weep for those already dead, he asked. Mourning serves no purpose. I weep because I am still human, she replied, and humans honor courage and sacrifice. The alien officer shook his head, perplexed by this illogic. In his culture, battlefield losses were expected and quickly forgotten. He motioned for his troops to continue their advance. This irrational race and its customs were beyond understanding. All around them, similar scenes played out. The people wept and mourned together, drawing comfort from shared grief. But there was no surrender in their hearts. On the scorched plains outside Kyiv, a steel worker planted a makeshift flagpole flying the colors of Ukraine. His country lay in ruins, but this symbolic act let his spirit soar higher than any alien craft. In Los Angeles, an elderly Chinese priest gave last rites to the fallen of all beliefs and backgrounds. Sleep untroubled, friends, he intoned. You kept faith and played your part. Now we who remain will keep vigil. High above, the last ships of Earth's defense fleet danced and spun in intricate evasive maneuvers. They fought with the brilliance of despair, but their time was short. On the corvette Shanghai night, Major Wu watched another comrade vessel blink out of existence. But no fear touched him now, only exultation. Hold course, he told the pilot. Our journey is ending, but our destination is assured. The Threxian guns finally found their mark, piercing the night's hull. Wu closed his eyes as fire and pressure consumed them, but in those last moments he saw past the destruction to a glowing vision of hope. The Threxian admiral watched with cold satisfaction as the last Terran ship burst apart. Now, finally, organized resistance was at an end. A valiant effort, he remarked to his second-in-command but ultimately futile. They fought bravely, yet still they fall. The other officer chittered his mandibles thoughtfully. Yes, they fall, and yet their spirit still stands unconquered, a dangerous example for our occupation forces. The admiral waved a clawed hand dismissively. No matter, we will grind their spirits down in time through control and pacification. But down on the planet, the songs and stories were spreading of grandmothers who wept but did not yield, of priests who consecrated the ground with words of solace and defiance, and of brave youths who stared down giants without flinching. The long night was ending, and dawn rose once more over battered but unbroken earth. The mood was somber aboard the Threxian command ship as it hovered in orbit above the now quiet earth. Days of intense ground combat had finally stamped out the last pockets of human resistance. Their great armada could now begin operations to exploit the planet's resources. By all accounts, a decisive and profitable victory for the Threxian expansionary forces. Yet Fleet Admiral Jakaz felt no elation at this hard-won triumph. In his quarters, surrounded by the spoils of conquest, he reviewed dispatch after dispatch describing the stubborn human holdouts. Despite impossible odds, they had fought to the last with ferocity and ingenuity, yielding ground stubbornly and making the invaders pay for every advance in green blood. Such spirit was alien to Jakaz. In all his solar decades of service, no species had resisted with such tenacity when defeat was obvious. These humans knew they could not win, yet battled on in the face of inevitable loss. It defied reason. A soft chime drew him from his thoughts. Enter. His second-in-command entered, snapping a sharp salute. Admiral, all enemy centers of resistance have been pacified. Earth is now under our control. Jekaz nodded. Good. And what is the status of the population? Still defiant, though beaten, scattered incidents of non-violent protests continued despite reprisals. They refused to accept or cooperate with our occupation. Jekaz regarded his subordinate curiously. This troubles you? The officer shifted uneasily. 
I confess their spirit remains disquieting. I fear we may have conquered Earth, but never truly defeated humanity itself. For several moments, the Admiral was silent, contemplating the disturbing truth of those words. Finally, he came to a decision. Signal the High Command that Earth is untenable for colonization or resource extraction at this time. Recommend limiting operations to a minimum military presence only. Shock rippled across the officer's features. But sir, after all the sacrifices made, abandoning the planet now would waste the entire campaign. High Command will never approve. Jekaz's expression was resolute. Then they can relieve me. But I will not preside over a prolonged bloodbath trying to subdue billions who have already demonstrated their determination to resist to the last breath. He turned to stare at the troubled blue world on his display screen. These humans have earned their freedom with courage and blood. We came here with grand plans for conquest, expecting easy profits from a weak species. But we have gained nothing and lost much of our own honor. Picking up a fragment of shrapnel from the surface battles, Jakaz turned it over in his claws thoughtfully. I believe the strong and ruthless deserve to rule. Yet these people, frail in body but mighty in spirit, have shown me otherwise. They are willing to die for their freedom. How can we now justify denying it? The officer hesitated, then spoke. If we withdraw from Earth, the populace may come to see us not as enemies, but enlightened and merciful instead. It could bring great credit to your leadership. The Admiral nodded solemnly. Then let us depart in peace. This planet's unconquerable spirit has humbled me, as it may yet humble all Threxians who underestimate the power of courage over might. In cities around the world, survivors looked up in wonder as the vast armada began withdrawing back to the stars. Though Arth's roads ran thick with blood, its people remained unbowed. Where Threxians relied on weapons, humanity's secret strength lay within. And it was a strength which now rippled outwards as a message of hope to all races who cherish freedom. Stand fast in truth, though shadows surround you. The darkness will pass, and dawn will come. For courage and indomitable spirit need bow to no force in this universe. And in that lesson, humankind found its greatest victory.